August, we, we raised Korea's rating. It's actually the second time we've raised Korea's uh, government bond rating uh, since the outbreak of the global financial crisis, which, when I think back, is really remarkable. But what this uh, slide shows you on the, um, on the screen is, uh, at the bottom is the, uh, the low point or the nadir of Korea's uh, sovereign bond rating, <laughs> which was assigned uh, in the late 1980s, actually. But it, it went all the way down to, to BA1. That's one notch um, below investment grade threshold um, in the depths of the Asian financial crisis. <clears throat> and uh, was progressively uh, raised to, to AA3, which is a, a, we consider to be a very, very high rating. The probability of default is essentially negligible over the medium term. Uh, historically, that's what AA uh, ratings have, whether they're sovereign or corporate. Let me just go to the key drivers. Um, as we have here, the, the primary one was the strong fiscal fundamentals, which, uh, you know, the, 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 the hallmark of the global financial crisis is that it, it undermined uh, uh, the fiscal fundamentals of many, uh, many countries, uh, particularly the advanced countries. Um, France is no longer AAA, for example. Uh, Spain is no longer AAA. In fact, it's 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 uh, it's rated in the low investment grade range. Um, Ireland was once AAA, deservedly so, in the early uh, you know ten years ago. Uh, and the there's been a big buildup of debt. We we see this the consequences on the newspaper every day with the U.S. Uh, with the sequester coming in um, into focus uh, increasingly, um, and all these fiscal challenges. So it, it really uh, added on a lot of debt to these uh, to these governments, and then the challenge of refinancing uh, such debt, selling selling it in the market at a, an affordable interest rate is a it's a big challenge for many countries, less so for the U.S. because of the global reserve currency status. But at any rate, uh, that was the primary one, and I'll show you some slides about that. Uh, another is a high degree of economic uh, resilience uh, that we've seen. I, I should note that there's a lot of pessimism in Korea right now over whether uh, even a 2% growth rate can be uh, sustained. And the Bank of Korea has uh, forecasts of, I think, 2.8% real GDP growth this year, uh, more than 3% in 2014. Uh, the business community is, is very pessimistic, I think mainly because of the uh, weakness in the global economy. Uh, Korea's economy is very much linked to uh, global economic prospects. Uh, so that was the other one. And uh, a key one, uh, the thing that kept me up at night in um, uh, in uh, in the fall of uh, 2008, was the external um, exposure of the bank, Korean banking system to the, the global markets. Um, you know, very high loan to deposit ratios, for example. Uh, they have all come down. I think in in part because of better risk management on the part of the banks. Uh, plus, the banking system had consolidated after the Asian financial crisis. Uh, but also uh, better regulation. I, I think the, the macroprudential regulations have been effective in Korea, and they've helped uh, re reduce these vulnerabilities to um, uh, the unavailability of, of international credit. And then uh, lastly, the uh, what we consider to be, uh, despite the uh, recent nuclear test and the ballistic missile uh, launch, uh, the unchanged status quo uh, on the Korean Peninsula with geo geopolitics. Those are the, the, the key drivers.